Welcome to the lecture Introduction to Partial Differential Equations. My name is Paweł Nurowski and I will be your instructor for this lecture this semester. What is a partial differential equation or as it is often abbreviated PDE? A PDE is a relation in the form of an equation between an unknown function and its partial derivatives. Let us introduce some notation for this course. It will be denoting by u an unknown function of variables, let's say x1 up to xn. Variables x1 up to xn will be called independent variables for the PDE. Function u is a dependent variable. It will be denoting by u with sub-index like for example u sub x1, a partial derivative of u with respect to variable x1, and so on, u sub xn will be a partial of u with respect to xn. In similar way, we will be producing higher order derivatives. For example, u sub x1 x2 will be second partial of u with respect to dx1 dxn. Having this notation, we can now give a general form of a PDE. So let's take some function, some real various function f of a number of variables, in particular of variables x1 up to xn, of our unknown u, of its first partial derivatives, and possibly higher order derivatives, and let us equate this function to zero. So this function gives a relation between an unknown u and its partial derivatives. Therefore, this is a partial differential equation. Partial differential equation is usually supplemented with some side conditions. This could be initial conditions as in the case of ordinary differential equations or boundary values conditions boundary value conditions So if we speak about PDE, we usually have in mind a functional relation between u, unknown function, and its partial derivatives, and this functional relation is supplemented by in the initial conditions or boundary conditions. What are the main problems in the theory of partial differential equations? Ideally, one would like to find all solutions of a given PDE and its side condition. If this is impossible in practice, determine at least if a solution exists. And if it does exist, determine if it is unique.
if it is impossible to find explicit form of a solution, determine behavior of a solution. Perhaps you can say how big is the space of solutions? What can you say about this space? A French mathematician Jacques Hadamard coined a term well possedness for problems associated with PDEs. According to Adama, a problem described in terms of a PDE is well posed if A. It has a solution. B. This solution is unique. And C, a small change in PDE or end site conditions produces only small changes in the solution. So this point A is called uh, existence, point B uniqueness, and point C stability. So according to Adamar, a problem is well posed if its corresponding PDE has a solution, the solution is unique and it is stable. Classifications of PDEs. There are various schemes for classifications. We'll be introducing them step by step when they will appear, when various facets of PDEs will appear during this course. For the moment, we concentrate on several aspects. The first one is classification with respect to the order of a PDE. So what is the order of a PDE? The order of PDE is the order of the highest derivative of the unknown function appearing in the PDE.
for example, we can have PDEs of first order, second order, third order, and so on. Like, for example, in here. So these are PDE of first order. And this one is of third order. Another classification is a classification with respect to how many dependent variables we have and how many equations we have. If we have two or three unknowns, we can have two or three equations relating these unknowns with each other. And in such a case, we will be talking about a system of PDEs rather than a PDE. For example, it's a single PDE. Whereas it's a system. These for two unknowns u and v. A very important classification concerns with this if PD is linear or nonlinear. Recall our general form of a PDE. So we say that this PDE is linear PDE if the function f appearing here is linear with respect to variable u and all its derivatives.
Otherwise, a PD is nonlinear. So, for example, an equation like this. is linear an equation like this is not linear because of the appearance of this term which is quadratic in U PDs and operators. Let us start from the observation that given a PD of order k, a function u must be k times differentiable to be its solution. So we have to consider functional spaces of functions which are k times differentiable. So define ck of d to be the set of all functions that are k time continuously differentiable in the domain D. In particular, C0 of D then then all the continuous functions. Now we have an important notion of a strong solution to a PDE. So a function in the set CK of D, K times differentiable functions, satisfying a PDE of kth order is called a, a classical or a strong solution of this PD maps between various functions, va various function spaces are called operators. So L, a map from F to some F tilde, where these are some functions, function spaces, is an operator. We denote action of an operator on a function by a square bracket. So if we have a function u in a functional space f, 
Then we, if we apply L, the value is another function now in space a twiddle, which we call L U. Examples of uh, operators are numerous, but for us, particularly interesting will be those that correspond to differentiating of, of functions. For example, application of a partial derivative on functions is an application of an operator. Since this operator involves differentiation, it is called differential operator. So differential operators map spaces CK of D to some other CK prime of D. Examples. For example, let's take L to be d over d squared over d squared plus d over dt. Such an operator, when applied on a differentiable function u, gives another one When applied on a function, gives what is the difference between this operator and this operator? The difference is that this one is linear differential operator. And this one is nonlinear. How to distinguish them? An operator L is linear if and only if. L applied on linear combination of functions u1 and u2 with a and b being numbers is the same as a and L applied on u1 plus b times L applied on u2. So L is linear if this holds for all functions u1, u2, and all real numbers a and b. I stress that a and b are not functions, they are numbers. A linear PDE naturally defines a linear differential operator such that a PDE can be written in terms of it.
For example, let's take an equation like this. The corresponds operator L so that the equation can be written as with the same operator we can write another equation like this. This, when written as an equation in the usual form, would be this leads to the following definition a linear PDE corresponding. to a linear operator L is homogeneous and this is the notion that we want to define if and only if the equation is L of u equals zero. It is inhomogeneous or non-homogeneous if and only if and function f is not equal to zero. So, in particular, equation is homogeneous And an equation is not homogeneous. The nicest thing about linear PDEs is their property called superposition. Suppose that U1 solves a PDE given by linear operator L and PDE looks like this. And suppose that U2 solves a PDE with the same linear operator L. Then, if we take linear combination of functions U1 and U2, with A and B being real numbers, Then this function v satisfies PDE of the form uh, 
In particular, if U1 and U2 solve homogeneous linear differential equation, then there is superposition also solve the same equation so Taking linear combinations of solutions of homogeneous linear partial differential equations produces new solutions. This is called superposition principle.